lot of different wells, a lot of different fin. Like I was reading with a lot of perspective actors. Um, but yeah, it was, it was quite surreal. You know, I'd only been in Los Angeles for two weeks and then was doing that, so I was like, um, yeah, pretty bonkers. <laughs> pretty bonkers. <laughs> and for you, Shannon? Two weeks, well, um, I actually auditioned for Finn and Mighty when it first came out. Um, <clears throat> But uh, when I had the audition for, for Jordan, it was some nondescript name, like, I think it was Lucas, or, um, but I couldn't find a, a reading partner for my audition, so my neighbor came from upstairs at 7 in the morning before she went to work and just put into the tape and I didn't think anything would come of it. I didn't really know exactly what the role was. And uh, yeah, got the role of one tape. And you kind of live in a state of disbelief when these things kick off. Like something might derail it, or you just don't get too excited. And I actually remember arriving on set, driving into the what's that? The, the big mountain that we always shoot in, the uh, GRV. Like the GVRD. And I saw you through the car, like all wet, like like dirty up, and yeah. yeah, just walking to work. I wasn't no, you were on set. I was in character. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just walking to work. Yeah, stumbling towards the trailers. <laughs> But uh, it must be a, a good kind of feels like, oh, we are actually shooting a show. And then the cast of the number, I met, I met a few of, uh, of the guys, and everybody's just so freaking lovely. Like, you guys created a small family there, like, uh, like offset as well, and like off screen as well. And you can, we can feel it when we watch it, that you guys have good chemistry, you have fun, and there's a little bit of drama, but it's a good just kind the right of, amount, yeah. just the like, right kind of drama, and that translates. Uh, do you have your favorite stories from the set that you would like to share? I'm sure Buzz had a lot more stories than me. Maybe well, you, you were there so much longer. Oh uh, yeah, I mean I don't know if there's like any one particular that stands out, but to your point, I think that there was a lot of very hard shooting days, very long days, like night shoots and whatnot, so it's you end up forming these relationships because you're, you're kind of going through this together. Same with the crew and the directors and the writers. It's, it's like trauma bonding. <laughs> basically, yeah. I mean, it was pretty tough stuff from time to time. But yeah, I mean, there was some... <laughs> yes? <laughs> oh, sorry. The camera was on me. I was just <laughs> reacting. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of... There's, I like, there wasn't many like on-set pranks because we, we had a lot to do in very little time. But yeah, I think we all bonded really well and just, yeah, I don't know. There's the stories. Do you have stories? I can't, I can't really think of any at the moment. No, yeah, it's just too much. I know, but it's funny when you hear about other shows where they have these funny pranks going on. Lola, Lola was trying to prank people, wasn't she? Yeah, she was pranked. Like, but it felt like on set wasn't a place for pranks. It's like, no, yeah. it was there. working. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was hard work. Because yeah. I met, I think the first two um, characters, or the first two actors I met from The 100 was uh, Chelsea and Christopher. Mm -hmm. There's, they have such a great chemistry. Yeah. Like, they are like, get, like hitting off from each other like a ping pong. On one moment on stage, Christopher uh, proposed, no, sorry, Chelsea proposed to Christopher. So they're, that month, working with them must have been, um, you know, a little bit bonkers, no? <laughs> <laughs> no? Not particularly, no. no, no. So I, think we're, I think we're all kind of bonkers. It's just whether, you know, you're in a place where you feel comfortable to be bonkers, right? I have to say I was pretty, I was always uh, surprised how funny Bob was between takes because he'll be doing really serious scenes yeah. and Bob will just, he's so witty, he just like suddenly throws in a joke that you're not expecting and then we just go back into the scene. I remember that, uh, the scene where Chelsea and Chris at the end of season five was such a heartbreaking one and, you know, they, they're sending their messages and whatnot and the first day he saying to me, between takes, like just, he's like, just like, be an idiot because it's so heavy here on set right now. And so I was like, just mucking around because everyone was very heavy hearted. It was Chelsea and Chris's last day. We didn't know if we were going to come back for season six or seven. And so, yeah, I think that was one of your first days, right? That was my first day. Yeah, yeah. and it was a pretty heavy set to turn up to. Yeah, it was very heavy. But I remember that energy you bring would really lift the set and sort of keep everybody 
it's like you're almost scaring the ship forward because the gravitas of everything can just sort of make things maybe cave in in a way, but your jokes would really sort of levitate and keep it the, the energy, the ball in the air, I think. Sure. Well, I loved it. Thanks, man. <laughs> so long. Um, I guess. And I guess I'm a pretty funny guy. <laughs> and, the, and the whole cast is a great mix of like people from all over the world, you know? Because it's not only Americans or Canadians, but you, you guys like come from all over the place. Uh, so that that's pretty that's pretty cool. To are, you, are you South African or are you Canadian? South African, yeah. Yeah, so South Africa, New Zealand, then Canada, US. That's a nice mix. Did you guys have any? Uh, did you notice any differences, in cult cultural differences? Uh, we had a lot of Aussies on. A lot of Aussies, but yeah, just so good at everything. I keep saying to Bob, the Australians are just so good at everything. Sports, acting, they just yeah. So talented. <laughs> We're so talented. Um, was there a difference in culture? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it, I think a lot of it stems from like it, the culture of, of the set usually would, comes from the top down, really. And um, I think having a Canadian crew was a, quite a, a like, Canadians are wonderful people. And like we're all just working hard, and then Vancouver, then it's just about being a well oiled machine. Um, I'm not necessarily. I think there was a difference in culture. There was a there was an alignment in the desire to tell stories and to do the best job we could. So I think we all found that common ground and uh, worked towards it. But yeah, I don't, I don't see any major differences. Okay, perfect. Yeah. We got a question here. Yes, we have a question. Yes, I can see that. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, first of all, I love you guys, and I have a pretty simple question, actually. I just wanted to know, how are you guys? How is life treating you? That's a nice question. Hey, uh, how are you, Shannon? I'm uh, great. I mean, we just got out of the Arctic Strike, uh, but I uh, got to go back to South Africa and travel. I saw my mom, maternal family in South Africa and my paternal family in Mauritius. I've just really enjoyed the year because you can tend to kind of feel like if you go away you might miss an opportunity for an audition or a special role that might come along. But since that wasn't on the table, just to be like doing a lot of bachata and salsa dance and seeing family and I yeah, I feel very, very lucky and fortunate. Yeah, I think that, that the strike was kind of had a silver lining in which like I could spend time with family. Um, last year I was shooting, you know, overseas and been, was separated from Eliza and our son for about five months, so it was, uh, it was really tough. So really, like the last, I guess, this whole last year I've been able to just kind of relax and be there for our, our son and it's been an interesting journey with Eliza working and me working with us trying to juggle our own careers while still having one parent at home. So. It's a, it's a new world for us, but um, yeah, I mean, having having a child is like one of the most challenging, but yeah, the most rewarding thing I've ever had in my life. So yeah, I'm pretty good. Thanks. I'm jet lagged today, though. Oh, well, no. That's not so good. Thank you so much. Can and how are you? I'm good, actually. Could I give you a hug? Uh, maybe later after the show. It's okay because okay. then everybody will like a hug. Okay. I'll Thank you. Also, look at my shirt. That's an awesome shirt. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that was a really nice question. Thank you very much. Not every time as people ask you how you guys doing. No. Oh, just checking. Yeah. That's nice. Nice thing. And you were mentioning becoming a father. Hmm. How did it change you as an actor? As an actor, uh, I think it changed like what I choose to do, what jobs I'll choose to do, how I choose to spend my time has become much more valuable, understanding what my own worth is and what's worth taking me away from family. Like so much, so many times, I think, when you don't have, you know, a, a partner or you're not 
you know, you're not a parent, um, it's very easy. And I think for the last 20 years, I was a gypsy moving from city to country to, work, to wherever the work was, and now it's a different perspective you have to have, and so you really have to value your own time. Um, I think it's one thing that we don't realise that you sign up to when you become an actor is that you kind of become a bit of a, a you have to gallivant around the world to chase your dream um, and not realising what you leave behind and what that, that actually means. Like, you know, uprooting your life every six months to go and do a job somewhere. So it's, yeah, having a, a child makes that very apparent and it, it makes you question what is actually worth your time to go and do the job. So I understand that you have to choose between like the time commitment and you know how, how well it's going to be paid, but you also choose the content of it. It's like, oh, I don't know if I would like myself to see me in this, or this is not going to be good. Not particularly. I, it's, it's, it, I mean, I choose the content as to, is it worth my time? Um, but not whether I, I want him to see me in it, because I've done a lot of things that I don't want him to see me in already. So. <laughs> There it is. Fair enough. And Shannon, you're not a father yet, no? No, no. I have a dog. You have a dog? Yeah. Basically, my baby. What's your baby? What's your dog's name? Nala. Lala. Nala. 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 What kind of dog is it? She's a Bernadoodle. Has she watched you and stuff? Has she what? Watched you and stuff? Has she been watching you? She's, she's, uh... (laughs) Yeah, that's basically she comes away. (laughs) Don't look, Nala. Don't look. can't see that. She was a puppy on set. We, uh, That's right, yeah. Oh, was she really? Yeah, she would come and bring her every day and put a little grass patch in the trailer so she could maybe pee there. Aww. She got out one time, I almost was, had a heart attack because she got out of the trailer and <laughs> didn't, didn't thankfully get hit by a car. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there was a period when everyone was bringing their dogs to set. A lot, a lot of dogs. Yeah. There was a lot of dogs on set. It was a lot of dogs on set. It was a dog set. It was, it certainly was. We got more questions. And, sorry, I get carried out about the dog talk. Go ahead. Uh, hello, um, my name is Beard, um, and I have a question for Bob. Um, I recently saw your other show, Love Me. Yeah. I love it. Uh, and this is a little bit another story for uh, in uh, of your personal life. You play a man who is a bit, it's difficult to get a baby. And how was it for you to play as this character? Well, I think um, me playing a particular role and, you know, having having tried and, and not being able to conceive for a couple of years, it, it's, a, it's a real thing that people don't talk about. So um, it was a subject matter that I wanted to approach very delicately and Boyana as well. It's something that, you know, it's a quite a common thing. If, uh, you know, it's very different from the hundred, but. Um, in this particular story, uh, they're struggling to have a child, so um, I was really happy to be part of that story. And you know, I've, I've had family and, and close friends that have been affected by that, and so it was really important to bring that story to light in a very truthful way. Um, and it's, you know, and it's personal to a lot of people, and I think those kind of stories can really connect with a bunch of people. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I was really happy is the wrong word, but honoured to, to be able to present that on the screen was a, was a thing that I was yeah, honoured to do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And next question, please. Hi, my name is Yuanda, and I wanted to ask you what kind of advice would you give a beginner actor, someone who started acting or is new to the acting industry? Oh, that's a good one. Shannon, you want to start off? Yeah, there's, there's really no formula, but uh, I mean, I almost see it like you shining a light down a dark road, and the light kind of takes you a little bit further as you keep going down that road. The biggest thing is to just start and get involved. You can take a class, that class might not, might, might not work for you, and then you decide to take another class, you might meet someone in that class who refers you to a play, or the road will sort of unravel as you go, but you, you can't really plot out the whole map from the start. You just have to take little steps, and each day you can ask yourself what you've done to age your career at that point. But everyone's path goes in different, different ways. Some people get success right away, some, some might take longer, but at the end of the day, if that's something that really speaks to you, and you're connecting with what your love and your bliss, what, what brings you joy, 
then hold on to that and then step forward with that. And then hopefully you're just you know doing it because you want to do it. Um, and that should lead you in the right the right direction. Thank you so much. That's a good advice. Do you have any good advice, Bob? About acting or just in general? Both. Let's do both. Look, I think Shannon, and you know, the nail on the head. Like there is no exact science in how you become successful in your eyes in terms of acting. And yeah, it's important that you have the passion for it and that you continue to learn and grow. I think all those other aspects of like having agents or managers comes later. I think finding those basic principles and an acting technique that works for you um, is important and just kind of pulling from so many different resources and creating your own plan for what works for how you act. If that makes sense. Yeah, and celebrate the little victories because it's so easy not to acknowledge the little victories that you have. And there is a tendency, like as actors, you might. I remember one of my teachers saying, "You get a role, and then you like, what's the next role?" And I always thought, like, for me, the big thing would be to get into this theater school. And you get into that theater school, and then there's another thing that you think you're supposed to get. I need the agent. I need the role. And you can fall into the trap of never quite being happy with where you are or what you. Like being brave enough to bring yourself towards achieving. So the little things, just be sure to acknowledge the little things that you do in, 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 your, in your process. Because I see time and time again people who are very successful, and I made that mistake myself with, with the little victories. Is that you don't actually uh, you don't celebrate. There's, there's a, you can lose the gratitude of, of what's happening, and that's an important thing to hold on to. That's actually a good general life advice, just to celebrate the moment that you are in and all of the things that you accomplished already, no? So yeah, that's a, that's a good one, good reminder. <laughs> like, thank you, like, all right, I'm down now. <laughs> I learn every day. But uh, I'm very privileged to, to be able to talk to different artists and actors. And one thing that is very in common is that act actors' life is a, a lot of being in the right time, in the right place, but also a lot of waiting, a lot of waiting. And in that waiting, if you keep patient and kind of optimistic, this waiting will, will give you fruit. But if you're getting bitter and like defeated by rejection, then it's not gonna lead you anyway. Do you guys feel similarly? Because that's my outside observation. I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I think that's like how you, the story you tell yourself between years, if you consider it waiting, then that can feel like somewhat defeatist. I kind of just think about having a positive attitude between years. I'm never waiting for the phone to ring. It's just that I'm between years, if that makes sense. I don't like to perceive it as like I'm sitting here waiting for something to happen because you, you don't want to be inactive in your own life. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of about your mindset between stuff and how you how you find accomplishment when there are so many other things that are out of your control in terms of your career. What are the things within your control that you can move forward with whilst you are between things and whatnot? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, I think also actors can, because we really care about any artistry or any career that you're in, you, care a lot about that and you can place all your worth on whether I get that role or where my career is. But I find what's really helped me is to find the joy and the things I'm doing with my life outside of acting, with the things that are helping me grow as a human being or with my relationships with people, but skills that I'm learning that I enjoy, you, you find meaning in that and then you're not placing everything on whether you get that role or not. And that will inform the entire, the entire circle of things I find, but actors can tend to just like, you can fall into a depression because you just, did I get that role or not, where's my career, and you forget all about everything else, actually living your life, just in acting classes and just about getting a role, and you forget to actually go see your family or go connect to other people or have some other experiences, um, which I think is, is really important. Uh, we had on the stage AJ from Backstreet Boys just a few panels ago, he's a great guy, but he gave a great piece of advice as well like to everybody that is into arts in general, that he is basically two people. AJ is his stage persona, his actor, his performer, his dancing persona, but then at home he's Alex. And this is kind of so he can step in and step out.
out in the world uh, as, as he wishes, and that boundary keeps him balanced. And as you say, not pay, like not putting a uh, value on getting that role, getting that gig, whatever, because that's a job. That's not who I am uh, or who he is. Uh, so I think that was such a valuable piece of advice. And I think young actors just don't get it in the beginning. They, they as you said, they put values like, oh my God, that means that I'm um, like my person is, is valued, but not like you know, it should be a separate thing from the craft. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> it was just, I love it. It's very, just very fascinating for me to observe today, like uh, how how difficult it is to be, be an artist, but also how easy it is to fall in all of the traps of being an artist. Um, so yeah, that's common. And it's also interesting that with, with, as an actor, you kind of want to bring a lot of yourself yes. to the role or the screen, so we can sometimes blur the lines or get too caught up in the role because you're trying to bring so much of who you are into the character, and then how much of it is you, how much of it is the character, because you, at the end of the day, you always want a, a spine of truth in it, but it is important to differentiate between the two worlds. Oh, did we have a question? Yes, I think so. Oh, go ahead. Hello, uh, my question is for Bob. I would like to know what you thought about the death of Bellamy. What I thought about it? Yes. Um, yeah, look, I, 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 it wasn't what the writers had intended. So, however, I did ask to have time off for my own mental health, I think after seven years of playing, and like, just to, on your point, like, when you play a character that's so, <sighs> where the stakes are so high, and I invested, like, that job became my life, and that was a dangerous thing. Like, you know, when you talk about having those boundaries, the lines are blurred by the end of that show for me, and I needed to have some time off. So I had requested to have time off for my own mental health, at the end, uh, during season seven, and so um, you know the writers and Jason honoured that request and allowed me to leave early. Hence, why Bellamy Bellamy's story didn't end the way that it was originally intended. Um, and look, for a couple of years, I felt guilt about that because I had a lot of people saying it's such a shame how Bellamy left, and I felt like it was my responsibility and I let people down. But the truth is that I had to choose between the character and myself. I chose myself and my own mental health. So, yeah, I know it sucked that he didn't get the ending that they, the writers had intended and probably what we all expected. However, um, you know, I, I had to put my own mental health before the job. And, uh, yeah, I hope that answers some questions for you and for everyone else who asked me that question year in and year out. Um, it was my choice and I wouldn't... I wouldn't have changed it, and I'm very thankful that the writers were gracious enough to allow me to leave. Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And it's always a good choice. It's yeah. always a good choice to choose yourself first. Uh, next question, please. Hi, guys. Um, do you all have any good memories from the show? Do you have any good, any good memories from the show? Yeah, I look, I look back on the show fondly. I mean, there are so many amazing things. Like, I, you know, I'm not sure I can do another seven years on the show, but I, yeah, in retrospect, it, it was a, a life-changing experience. I mean, I met my wife. I now we now have a, a, a child. Like, that is, you know, a legacy of being on that show. So I can't help but be grateful for that show and what it has brought my life. And even allowing me to come to places like this and meet all you guys where our work has been able to touch so many people. So there's so many collective memories and, I, and I'm sure if I got to watch the show back, um, I'd be like, oh, that was the day that such and such did this or that was the day when this happened and, you know, um, but yeah, like specific memories that, you know, it would have to be something like watching the show and then going, this is what happened that day. But as a general, like, yeah, I, I look back at the show fondly. And um, yeah, we worked really hard. We made something pretty cool. One of my, uh, my fun memories is actually rolling out of bed, checking my phone, and got an email from Christopher. I had a net, I don't know how I got my email, but he 
said hi son and he just wanted to welcome me to, to the show and it was that was really touching and then when I got to set on my first day there was all this chaos and the, you know very heavy part because you know the, we were losing Christopher and Chelsea and I remember he was having this really heavy scene he was going to do his close-up and I just felt this little bent hand on my well not a little hand but a hand touch my lower back and turn around to Christopher and he said how you doing you okay and I just remember thinking that was so generous uh, even though because as an actor you can when you have like an emotional scene you kind of get really in your own self and stuff and he was expansive and coming and checking on the new guy and I just was like wow thank you but, yeah I'm fine but um, yeah he was just very aware and very selfless and the, that was a really sweet sweet memory of mine on the show for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And next question, please, is like a trio question. Are you guys gonna sing? <laughs> Our question is if we can make a career together. A what? Sorry. A career. A real? No, sorry. Sorry. Maybe next time. <laughs> Be real. Be real. It's the social media that you can post only at the time that the. Um, Be real. Yeah. Be real. Um, but with that beautiful request, uh, could I actually ask you that we could take a selfie with all of the people here? And because I have my lovely assistant and photographer Jenna that will do it for us with her professional equipment. All right, guys. So my lovely audience, I would like you guys to stand up, stay at the places you are, and on the count of three, we're gonna raise our hands up and we uh, need to kneel. Yeah, we need to. Oh, I get to kneel.